Hello, KringleCon. Oh, man, it's awesome to be here. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Claus, Mrs. Claus, for inviting me to come out and speak uh, to you on Software Defined Radio, the new awesome. Um, you know, speaking speaking of awesome, it was it was really great to to come and take the train up here. It was a uh, it was definitely a lifetime uh, of uh, of waiting to do something like that, and it was just one of those things that I'm always always going to remember. And uh, speaking of something to always remember, uh, I, I can't wait to to tell you all about some of the fun things that I've been doing with some software defined radio, and and you know some of the just the little things of why I think it's so awesome. All right. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am a uh, penetration tester and hardware hacker uh, and all sorts of fun stuff uh, at a little company uh, that does pen testing of all sorts of varieties uh, called InGuardians. Uh, I'm the director of research there, and this has been some of the things that I've been uh, looking at just for various projects uh, across the board for pen testing and otherwise. Uh, I'm also a SAN certified instructor. My primary course is the wireless course, go figure, uh, SEC 617, um, Ethical Hacking Wireless. I'm also the uh, silent founder and a uh, regular host of Paul's Security Weekly. And I have my uh, extra class ham radio operator, uh, and my call sign is uh, Kilo Bravo One Tango November Foxtrot. So if it isn't pretty evident, I have a, a strong interest in radio of all, all sorts of varieties, and hence why uh, I'm here to speak to you today about, about software-defined radio. All right, so let's give you a little bit of background. Uh, what is software-defined radio? It's uh, it's a radio that has no preconceived notion of purpose. Uh, we define what the radio does in software. So with various software applications uh, on uh, a computing platform of some variety, whether it be a Raspberry Pi or a laptop, desktop, or, or, or some other purpose-built device, uh, we can take a radio and turn it into effectively whatever we want with software. And this has become something that's been wildly popular uh, and has increased in popularity uh, over the last couple of years just because now the hardware has become so much more accessible to the average user and we'll talk a little bit about that that said because it has become accessible from both a hardware and a project a software perspective uh, there we now unlocked the ability for us to look at all sorts of new protocols that we hadn't been exposed to before or from a security perspective also for lots of fun as well. So thinking about this multitude of software-defined radio stuff that has uh, seen, shown to market and is relatively uh, affordable, uh, I've got a couple of my favorites. Um, there's the Hack RF with transmit and receive at about $300. The Blade RF uh, is about $375, a little bit more with receive and transmit. <laughs> Uh, arguably one of the industry leaders uh, from Edis, the, the B200 Mini with receive and transmit at roughly $800. Now we're starting to get a little bit, you know, out of the range of what the CFO will approve, but still really great stuff. However, one of my absolute favorites is something that's incredibly inexpensive. It's the RTL SDR. Uh, a real tech based uh, inexpensive software defined radio that was originally intended for doing something else entirely. It was only found later that it was an actual sort of mini software defined radio. A high quality one with a great kit with all sorts of antennas is about $35. Now they're receive only, but still with receive, it gives us the ability to start doing a significant amount of analysis of software defined radio uh, and radio protocols just from the get-go to even see if this is something we're interested in or if there's something that we need to investigate further and spend more money on. All right, so I think receiving is fun. Uh, you know, I'm a computer guy. I like to just sit back and be a wallflower and listen sometimes. And on, on the radio side, what that really means is I can sit and listen and then find stuff that I didn't know was there before. And then, of course, when I find something that I didn't know was there, I ask myself, what do they do and what are they there for and what are they controlling and what type of information is there? And in some of these cases, you, you find some, some very un, unexpected type of things. So let's talk about some of those, those things. Now, for me, 
I like to use some software to discover some signals. And I'm going to show this to you uh, in a little bit, uh, assuming one of my uh, demos doesn't work. But uh, one of the, the pieces of software that I like to use with my RTL SDR to discover signals, see if there's anything there um, initially, uh, is an application called GQRX. Uh, it is largely platform cross-platform compatible, uh, meaning I, I use it natively on my Mac. Uh, I use it in a Linux virtual machine. I use it on a Linux box all the time. I'm told that it will run on Windows, but uh, I'm, I'm not so much of a Windows guy, so I haven't used it much there, and it's a little bit difficult to, to install via Pothos and so forth. Um, however, uh, SDR Sharp is very similar on, on Windows. Uh, Give us the ability to tune our software to find radio into um, a, a station or a frequency and then we'll visualize what everything is there so we can see whether there was something present in, on the airwaves that we, you know we can't see with our own eyes and now it gives us the ability to start drilling down and figuring out where we may want to uh, may want to use so this is going to use our local software defined radio to look at local signals and we can even now start turning this into some stuff uh, worldwide. As there are a number of folks that have taken their software-defined radios in some variety and connected them to the internet, go figure, and allow you to use their software-defined radio. Uh, in the case, there's a catalog of them at websdr.org. And uh, one of my favorites uh, is at the University of Twente in the Netherlands, um, which is uh, here on the slide. But let's take a look at what that actually looks like, assuming, of course, I can get this over to my web browser. All right. And uh, we've connected to uh, the web SDR at the University of uh, Twente. And uh, I've tuned this to uh, uh, 4625 uh, kilohertz. And this happens to be uh, a fairly famous uh, famous thing here. We can see in the waterfall display as it goes by, uh, I've zoomed in quite a bit. Uh, we're actually listening to uh, the Russian buzzer station, uh, which is allegedly one of those uh, number stations that were used uh, for communicating the spies and so forth. Uh, we don't really don't know what the, uh, the purpose of the buzzer station is, but it's also fairly difficult to hear in many parts of the US, uh, such as uh, where I live or uh, potentially at the North Pole. So by using one connected remotely to the internet, we can actually extend our range for some of this stuff as well. So this one's pretty neat to listen to and you can use this from a web browser and actually plays all sorts of audio. Um, I have this one muted currently. All right, but what else can we do? So we can use the software defined radio to visualize locally. Uh, we can also use some stuff to visualize remotely, such as uh, those listed as at web SDR. Uh, and I've also recently successfully used the audio from one of those remotes and piping it through like a virtual audio cable so we can redirect audio uh, from the web browser to another software application to catch the data. Uh, in the case of the one that I was looking at was the ability to do um, uh, tracking for uh, APRS uh, to a location that I couldn't receive that data locally. Okay. All right, so we looked at the, the, the demo of, of that. I got ahead of myself a little bit there. In any case, there's all sorts of other fun stuff uh, that's available and lots of it in areas that most people wouldn't necessarily consider. Uh, the uh, 433 megahertz ISM band, uh, industrial, scientific, and medical, largely across the world, uh, doesn't require the user to have a license. This is all of your consumer stuff. And there's all sorts of fun stuff uh, in the 433 megahertz uh, range. But we don't necessarily know what it is. However, uh, with the RTL SDR, there is a software package, uh, RTL underscore 433, has done a bunch of um, community gathered uh, signatures for devices in the environment that they know how to decode. 
and when they see a signal, uh, will attempt to decode it based against the the previously uh, matched signals. And some of them, some of them are good, some of them are bad, uh, and some of them are do lots of false positives. And they have uh, more than a hundred devices currently listed. I think my current copy uh, knows how to decode for 113 devices, and about a hundred of them are relatively uh, reliable. Um, RTL 433 um, not only will it decode and give you the output from the stuff that it knows about based on its signatures. Uh, it will also give you the generic output that we can do additional analysis with and try to recover and write our own fingerprints for. Okay. So I've used this quite a bit at home. I uh, was head of project that I was going to be uh, working on and um, was using it to uh, attempt to connect to my Oregon scientific uh, weather sensors to populate a weather display. Uh, and when I fired that up, I discovered all sorts of other interesting things as well. Some of them that make you ask all sorts of other questions. So let's see what we can see here. And this is going to be a little bit demo that, uh, that goes ac across a couple of things here. Let's see. Let's try. To run RTL 433, I was running this earlier and wasn't having um, a lot of luck. Ah, that's because I have this. Now, we mentioned GQRX a little bit earlier, and this is GQRX. Uh, I have it tuned to 433.9 uh, megahertz, which is in the 433 megahertz ISM band, uh, which I would expect a bunch of stuff in my environment. And clearly there's some signals here looking at our waterfall display that we see some stuff over time. And the fast forward transform says that there's stuff happening in, in real time. Now, there's stuff here. I have no idea what it is. I can see that there is stuff here. So if we stop this and I move back over to my terminal session, let's try and see what happens uh, when we run RTL 433. Oh, well, can't open it. Let's unplug it, replug it back in, and try it again. All right, it did find it this time. It's tuned to 433.92, and I would expect in a, in a minute or two here for stuff to show up. Um, but I tried this earlier with my weather sensor that I brought with me, and it turns out it didn't work so well. I wonder if it's just too cold here at the North Pole. Maybe my device is uh, a little on the cold side and frozen and it's not working properly. But uh, you get the idea, fairly simple command line tool, and we'll start uh, giving us output from all sorts of fun stuff. That's not what I want. I want this one. All right, so we saw some stuff with GQRX. Not so much with RTL 433, uh, given that my, my weather sensor is probably way too cold here at the North Pole. But uh, we can also do all sorts of other fun stuff with our RTL SDR, such as using uh, something like RTL FM, one of the built-in utilities for the software package, uh, to tune into some radio frequencies and then pipe that outbound to other stuff. Uh, and one of those uh, other pieces of software that we can use is a tool called Multimon NG. And while it's also not just for radio, it will do all sorts of other stuff such as decoding DTMF for tone dialing, um, decoding Morse code, all sorts of other fun stuff. It will also do pager traffic such as POXAC and flex. So if we can take the raw audio output from our one of our RTL tools, such as RTL FM, and send that via a Linux pipe to Multimon NG, we can now start decoding any of that pager traffic. Now be careful where you are because that may or may not be permissible by, by law in, in your jurisdiction. Um, but you can also start doing some research and potentially setting up your own pager transmitters uh, for, for doing this as well. Okay. So interesting, fun stuff. And there's all sorts of other interesting information for POXAG and FLEC, where it was a uh, protocol that was designed many years ago where no one thought it was a good idea to have any encryption um, included there. All right. We've done a bunch of uh, receive-only stuff. And with the RTL SDR, it's a great way to get started in listening. But what if we wanted to do some transmit? Now, there's a couple of ways that we can do so inexpensively um, with 
not a lot of great fidelity. Uh, we can use a Raspberry Pi to toggle GPIO ping, and we can use uh, two packages, uh, RPI TX, Raspberry Pi Transmit, or Pi FM for doing FM radio. Those work really well, uh, can be lots of fun, and we can create all sorts of different transmitter types with that as well. Uh, we also have something kind of new that's interesting, is uh, a project called FL2K, um, which uses uh, some custom drivers for the FL2000 chipset, which are often featured in inexpensive USB 3.0 to VGA adapters, which run under $15 on Amazon. So yeah, we can use a VGA adapter to transmit RF signals, which we can receive with our TLSDR. That's kind of frightening. Now, it's not a great range and it's not the best fidelity, but for 15 bucks, that's kind of priced right and can be lots of fun to experiment with. So there's lots of stuff that can actually be done with uh, FL2K. Uh, we can send FM radio, FM modulated signals. Uh, we can do some with some of the sample stuff. Uh, we can spoof GPS. Uh, we can spoof uh, cellular, UMTS, LTE, GSM. We can do digital video. We can do digital audio. We have now a bunch of of methods for creating data, which is uh, in the air, which is potentially kind of terrifying. Because what does this really end up meaning? Is that now we're going to potentially find in our environment all sorts of, you know, quote, rogue transmitters that can be repurposed, just like the uh, FL2000 uh, chipset in those VGA dongles, that we can now do data exfil that is now no longer considered nation state only uh, capabilities. Um, there, there's a project uh, that my intern and I worked on called Vapor Trail that uses a Raspberry Pi uh, to do just those same types of transmissions uh, that would have been previously considered nation state only capability. And if you're really scared about some of this type of stuff, uh, Dragos uh, has some some stuff that he's been working on and analyzing RF-based transmissions coming out of all sorts of various things that are probably either in your home or enterprise, such as keyboards, motherboards, USB drives, all sorts of things that are now, quote, unintentional transmitters. Okay. So what next for all of this type of stuff? You know, what does this really mean that we can have inexpensive transmitters and even inexpensive receivers? Uh, what does it really mean for data exfiltration? for both a uh, pen test with command and control or with uh, some other uh, malicious actor for command and control. Can they now go out of band that you don't have the ability to detect with your traditional tools? So now we need to sort of step up our game and do additional RF detection programs uh, to start hunting some of this stuff down because now this is just no longer a pipe dream of the paranoid, it's allegedly happening. And the tool set is becoming more and more robust uh, to make this happen, to take all of this stuff out of band. So with this, we're just scratching the surface. I'm probably about over time. We have so much that we can explore with software defined radio. Uh, we have so much that we can uh, interact with. And what ones are we finding that, uh, that leak information from our environment that may be considered information that we don't want out. Uh, and, and then how can an attacker interact with that to potentially change our environment or uh, use that as uh, part of information for some other part of an engagement or some other attack? Okay, so with that, Software Defined Radio has opened up so much more of this wireless spectrum for both attackers uh, and for us as uh, security professionals uh, to use and to, to be concerned about. So with that, again, thank you to the clauses for uh, for bringing me here to the North Pole. It's greatly appreciated. It's been uh, great talking with you for uh, for this time. And uh, I do hope that uh, you do enjoy the rest of your con. Stay warm. And if there are any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And I'd be happy to follow up and um, you know talk to you about some software-defined radio stuff. Thanks again. <laughs>